So today I've come to a forest. I haven't been in the forest since, um, well, way back in the summer when I went to the secret forest, which was fantastic. And I uh, have come to this place called um, Sudley Ponds in order to try and take some photos. And it's become very apparent very quickly that really I've come to the wrong place. Um, not that this isn't actually a really nice place to come and visit, but more importantly, uh, there's no sun here at the moment. Uh, and that's, that's very difficult because you need that sun uh, coming through the trees, sort of, if you, if you want to do sort of forest photography, you need that sun coming through the trees in order to, to light up little bits to get that dappled light on, on, on things. Otherwise, otherwise you're not really getting the full effect of the forest. Now I've seen some shots here that I think I quite like. But to be honest, I'm going to come back. I'm going to go somewhere else and come back. The other problem is it, this is uh, uh, in uh, the, the middle of autumn. Now, golden hour starts at about four o'clock um, and I got here about 20 to three. Um, so I've got to make this really quick decision. Do I go for that now? Do I go find, try and find somewhere else on the road because I don't really know where to go. There's a, there's a place called Speech House which uh, isn't too far away, which might be an option. Um, do I go try that now and maybe get something with some light uh, on it? Or do I hang around here, uh, which I don't think is, a, is the best idea, to be honest. Um, so I'm, I'm going to head back to the car now uh, and uh, try and see if I can just get somewhere with a shot. I did take one shot at that location, uh, just across the road from the lakes, in fact, and here it is. I had made the right decision to move, however, as I found out when I got to the Cyril Hart Arboretum at Speech House in the Forest of Dean. So uh, the lakes were a bit of a washout, excuse the pun, but uh, on the way back I actually stopped at the place, in fact I'm here now, it is in the middle of Golden Hour. And uh, this is a place called uh, Speech House Woodlands, which is quite nice, free to park. And uh, the light here is fantastic. And I've got a couple of good shots uh, that hopefully you're gonna be able to see on screen uh, in just a second or two. Um, what I've found here, I mean, there's people wandering around. There's another photographer here uh, taking photos with kids. So uh, it's, not, um, it's not the quietest place in the world. And of course it's at the weekend as well, which doesn't help, uh, but definitely seeing a lot of things here that I wouldn't have seen uh, at, uh, if I'd stayed at the lake. So very, very pleased uh, that I've, I've moved on uh, to do something else. I just arrived at the Arboretum as Golden Hour was starting and I spent that time finding compositions, taking images. Now I didn't use a tripod at this point so I could be a lot more mobile and I didn't have to worry too much about the settings on my camera which were very similar settings for each uh, photo that I took. On the whole I am very pleased with the images that I got here. It was absolutely perfect weather, absolutely perfect sunlight and positioning of trees uh, which meant that I've got some uh, shots that I can be incredibly proud of. So I'm back in the car, camera uh, balanced precariously uh, on the dashboard. Um, that was a bit of a rush because golden hour is just about leaving and I had a short window of time to come in uh, to get some pictures and do everything. Now, um, I think I've got some good images there. Uh, th this is a really, really interesting place to come to and I've got to come back here. I really do because I've literally just done the first tiny, tiny bit of what is quite a, a, a much uh, bigger wooded area. Uh, but what's great about this place, in com contrast to um, Sudley Ponds, where we were earlier, is that there is light here. Uh, you can see uh, the, 
the way that the light was pointing was uh, into the forest and and of course that means that it was bouncing off trees and you've got little uh, dappled effects on the trees or you had something that was uh, I mean it was nice that's basically what I'm saying uh, it's the sort of light that you would want to see uh, in a forest I can see why they've put an arboretum here quite frankly because everything seems to be in the right place you know it, everything orientates into uh, the right area uh, whereas um, as others, other places you go to, you know, they might be incredibly beautiful places, but they might not necessarily be the best places to take photos with. But don't despair, because actually, if you take a tripod with you and with modern cameras and modern sensors, you can you can do an awful lot of, of um, you know, long exposure shots, for example, uh, or uh, changing your ISO settings and things like that, which will actually give you some photos even from a location where you don't think there are any now today i didn't do that because i was literally chasing that light i wanted to get some of the uh, that light and that was the point of uh, of going there for me um but you shouldn't feel like you're limited to that uh because well you're not really the other thing that you have to work around is other people and that's an unfortunate thing about being in a public space there's always going to be people around you and today for me that problem was that there was another photographer around which meant occasionally there were uh, flashes because he was taking uh, pictures of people uh, uh, with a, a big uh, flash um, uh, flashlight uh, and uh, so that the sun behind it wasn't wasn't uh, overexposed um, with the, the people in the foreground. Really uh, a great way of, of uh, in fact it's probably the only way of doing that sort of uh, uh, photo but uh, again you get groups of people who will sometimes be very noisy or will sometimes be right in the middle of your shot uh, and I'm sure that you've seen on some of the um, uh, b-roll that I've got uh, in these these videos occasionally you'll get people in there I try to keep them out of the background. When you go into, you know, Photoshop or into Lightroom, you can uh, you can mask them out often. Um, but if you can get as clean a capture as possible, then that's a really good idea because it saves you a hell of a lot of time in post rebuilding parts of your shot later on. And this was my favorite shot of the day. I absolutely love the way that the tree in the middle looks a little bit like an old man walking through the forest. It's like the old Ents in Lord of the Rings almost. And that light coming in behind it and those lines uh, that are leading towards that tree. I absolutely love it. Now, even though I adore some of the pictures that I got on this day, I still wanted to get more autumn colours. You know, you see people posting their wonderful autumn shots on Instagram and you just, you want to join in with that as well. So a little bit later on, a couple of weeks later, I took myself out to Wales in order to try and get some more shots of those wonderful autumn colours. So I thought I would continue my journey looking for autumn colours uh, somewhere a little bit different. Now I've come to uh, the Eland Valley and in the last uh, section of the video you'll have seen that I've been in the forest. Today isn't really a good day for forest shots, there's not that much light, the light that is there it's not coming through the trees, um, but the Elam Valley's got an awful lot of colour and an awful lot of um, that, that kind of that autumn feel that, that, that you want. Uh, so today I've come here to see if I can find uh, some really nice autumn shots that aren't your typical let's go into a forest and shoot a tree shot, although uh, there will be plenty of trees in today's video. So I uh, made it to the place where I thought I was going to take a photo and it became very apparent very quickly that actually I'd chosen uh, completely the wrong time of day to come because the light is up there right now and the subject that I wanted to take was over there so uh, that, that didn't didn't really work but I have found um, uh, an exposure looking across uh, the lake and I just cut to that for a moment we're actually still in the car park um, and it's actually amazing uh, how close to things like car parks all of these uh, the, the, these places are so I've got I'm doing this at an ISO of 50 um, at f5.6 I'm at 1 320th of a second um, and I'm just going to take an exposure now well I, I'll, I'll drop this on to and as I've said before this is not easy to do with one hand in fact, I can't do it with one hand. So what I'll do is I'm going to turn the, uh, the camera off for a second. 
Uh, I'm going to put this onto uh, a two second uh, timer so I don't touch the button and I, it, it, I know you don't normally need that but I have had problems with exposure when I'm down at f5.6 uh, so I need to make sure that whatever it is I'm doing isn't going to um, cause camera shake uh, on that as well. Anyway, the other thing is this isn't perfectly straight and I did look at the picture and think oh we're going to straighten that up in Lightroom and usually I wouldn't do that but when it's on a tripod like this I do sometimes find it's a bit difficult to get that absolutely spot on that absolutely straight line so uh, I'm going to go with this uh, a few readjustments and I'll take this photo. Okay, so I've come along uh, at the bank a little way uh, because the one thing that that shot didn't give me was all of the autumn colours that I was looking for. It's not bad in terms of, of light, although it is still uh, the middle of the day, so it's this, this sort of quite harsh light. However, um, this is a little bit more, it gives a, a little bit more idea of the trees and, and the, uh, the lake uh, with the, uh, the thing in the, in the middle. And see, what I'm trying to do with this uh, and I'm, I'm still playing with it. I'm still kind of angling it around as, as we speak. What I'm trying to do is to get the, uh, the little house, I don't know what else to call it, it's a little house, in kind of that sweet spot uh, between, there we go, uh, between the, um, uh, the, the land, so that's about halfway down the image. Um, and then have that over to the right hand side. So I zoomed into the photo uh, just so that I could make sure that the uh, the building, which is what I'm focusing on, is absolutely sharp. This time I'm doing it at f11 uh, because I want to get everything in the frame sharp and it's uh, 1 1 80th of a second. Again I'm using uh, that um, uh, 50 ISO. Let's see how that turns out. So I've got a good couple of exposures here and unfortunately uh, the lights just kind of disappeared and I was hoping that we might get that kind of golden hour thing, I hope maybe a nice sunset, maybe just some nice light coming through some trees and stuff but the light when it is there it's very diffused so it's it's not that kind of pinpoint light that you'd want to get for uh, for an autumn color thing. Um, I'm going to move on to another location now and uh, see if I can get something uh, along the same lines. Uh, now I have been here I have done uh, the Elam Valley before so it's not something that if I don't find the right picture I'm just not going to take it it's not that sort of uh, uh, that sort of trip and I have got a couple of good images here so that might be good enough for my autumn collection you'll never know. Um, well let's, uh, <laughs> let's move on to the next place. Ultimately, although I'm pleased with the images that I got at that location, I had to do an awful lot more editing than I thought I would do to bring out some of the colours and on one I had to change the colour space entirely just to get the kind of effect that I wanted. Like I said, that close-up of the pump room didn't really give you the, the autumn colours that I was after. However, the next location was a little bit more interesting. I found a shot. I was actually driving down the road and I saw it out of the car window on the right on the right hand side of the car. And uh, there's a load of motorbikes around. They're making an awful lot of noise. Uh, so I, I'm very luckily uh, there's a, there was a car park not too far away. One of the great things about coming to the Elan Valley is that you do get a few places that you can pull over and just walk back down the road if you wanted to take some pictures. Anyway, uh, I've taken an exposure and this time I've put my ND filter on because the water's very very there's a lot of wind there's a lot of texture in the water and I wanted to even that out as much as possible well I've done that uh, and it turned out quite well I put it on f20 and that meant that I could get a, a, a four second exposure uh, and that really worked on, on the water but I'd just been along here a little bit and I found what is possibly a, a slightly different exposure so let's head down here and see if now I, I'm, I'm looking at the, the composition as I... Right, okay, well let's see if this works. Now, uh, put it in down here, camera down there. Let me just show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so what we're seeing there is a slightly different exposure from the one that I had before. Uh, I think this is going to be a landscape and I think it's going to have that, uh, uh, that outcrop of trees on the right hand side and then you can see the dam in the background uh, on the left. There is a little bit of light coming in uh, to that as well and it should give an interesting shape to the landscape. So I'm going to set the camera up now uh, and I'll see you in a few seconds when that's done. 
Okay, so I've set the shot up. It's a landscape shot and I've pulled out a little bit. I'm getting F20 again, but I'm getting eight seconds <laughs> it thinks it's going to want to uh, to do. And, and the camera is flashing at me saying, no, you really should have a flash for this. Otherwise we're gonna to have to do a very long exposure. Um, I'm focusing in the middle. Let me just switch this around. And you'll be able to see. I'm focusing in the middle on the actual trees themselves. Um, but it's at f20, so the rest of this should actually be pretty sharp. Um, I've again, I'm, I'm using the lowest ISO I possibly can. I'm, I'm still at 50. Um, and uh, there's a reason for that, is that I like the look of the, the things and I like what I can do with it. I can pull it awful, around an awful lot more if I'm at 50. Uh, and actually a six second exposure on this is a desirable thing. So having that lower ISO is perfectly fine for me. Uh, right, let's take this image and see what I end up with. Okay, and looking into the uh, camera, that actually I'm pretty pleased with that shot. I think that's going to make a nice shot. I am going to have to just change it a little bit, just rearrange it a touch in uh, probably in um, uh, Lightroom because that composition looks just slightly off. But I'm also sort of fully aware that if I don't have a little bit more on the edges, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to crop this down um, because I'm cropping it for Instagram, of course. So I'm going to have to crop this down beyond what I'd, I'd usually want to. Uh, so I am just going to let's just rearrange this a little bit now. I'm sorry if there's any shaky camera work, but this really is something that you should have uh, two hands for. Uh, <laughs> I, d I don't know how this works. Luckily, I've got a really great video camera uh, that absolutely helps me do this stuff really does. Okay, so I think, I think if everything goes well, uh, that's a little bit better. Now I've just straightened everything up a little bit. I'm going to refocus it, if it'll let me. If you do it on the trees, it seems to have a point where it likes to pick up. Uh, and so we'll do that one more exposure from there. Again, this is another six second exposure, F20, uh, ISO 50. Ooh. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's a, that's a lot more uh, like I wanted. So next thing, of course, is to get that back into Lightroom and see how it actually turns out. Now, uh, I think I'll be able to get some nice colors out of that. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's a bit difficult to tell. Uh, however, for this particular location, I think I'm done right now. Uh, and uh, the thing about the Elan Valley is basically it's a road uh, running through this particular uh, place and it's a really nice driver's road. So a lot of drivers come up here, uh, but it does mean that there's places to stop. It does mean that there's, uh, uh, um, you know, it's an easy place to come and take photos. And the scenery around here is absolutely stunning. Uh, so, I, you know, if you have a chance of coming to the Elan Valley at all, I would really recommend it. And this is the final image that I got, and I'm much more pleased with that than I am the images that I took earlier in the day. I had to do an awful lot less editing with this, just pulling out some of the colours. Uh, I, I uh, evened out that water a little bit because there were still a few places uh, that weren't quite uh, as even as I, I'd like them. But other than that, and a little bit of uh, dodging and burning, just a touch of do dodging and burning in a, a few areas, I didn't do anything to this at all, really, and I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. This is this is what I was after when I came out today. So I explored a few. It's got very cold out because uh, it's getting towards the end of the day. We're not going to get a, uh, a sunset tonight. There's uh, a few interesting clouds around, but nothing that I can really find a decent um, exposure for. I have got some shots. Um, which if they work out, they'll be great. Uh, but the light isn't quite right. It's very, very flat today. So uh, th there's none of that kind of interesting beam of light sort of th things that you'll get. And anything that I do want to have like that added to the photos, I'm going to have to do uh, afterwards in Lightroom. Well, we'll see how that goes. Obviously, next week's video is going to be all about how I edited uh, the best shot uh, from, uh, from the ones that I got today. And uh, well, it happens to be this particular shot that we've got right here. 
I actually got this shot right at the very end of the day. I was coming back home, it was in the middle of blue hour, and I passed that pump room again, although I was much closer to it. And I thought, well, I'll just give it a go. I'll give it one more try. And I found this composition. It's the pump room again, but with those beautiful autumn colours behind it. The exact colours that I was trying to find, and I've been trying to find all autumn so far. Well, here they are. Luckily, the lake was very, very still, and it meant that I could take this handheld. I pushed the ISO up to 500, and the settings were relatively similar to what I'd had before. I was still trying to get as much in focus as possible, so I think I was on uh, f11 for this. But it wasn't until I got into Lightroom that I really realised this was the shot of the day and I'm really, really pleased that I've got it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please do leave a like and comment, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you will get notified any time that I put up a video. Also, share this video with your friends. If you think that if you've got people who are into the same thing as you, and you think that this is going to be good for them, share it out, because that's how the channel grows, and I really uh, would love to hear from you in the comments below. Next week, well, we'll see how I edited that photo. I'll catch you then.